Tesa the first royal university ekubi izo kugobele la makezi gaba sawo Bwetu baba kuita mumbele no urunji Sete ndeki nejuki zaba hizi Naba za denti wandi kaba galo kujega tako Mulusomo lutandi kam agast Osobolo kugenda kumutimba gano Puchibanja cha www.mru.ac.ug Okumanya bichisome sebi enja ulo Awamu na ebisale Songe ilo sobolo kujia kuchilebe cha fechikulu Echiru mbama saka Oba kutabili ya feka keka mengo Okumanya bisinga wo Osobolo nukuba kumasimu gano wa manga Noti msambu tano mukaga Tano munana bili Nya mukaga zero, nenoti musambu tano nya, monane muemu, satu mukaga munana, nenoti musambu musambu biri, monana musambu mukaga, satu musambu munana. This is the first royal university. You are most welcome to MRU TV. I'm by names of teacher Kukenya Joseph, and I'm going to take you through trades in East Africa. Basically, we have, we have three trades. That is the Indian Ocean trade. Indian Ocean trade. We have the long distance. Long distance trade. And lastly, we have this we have slave trade. So I'm going to take you or I'm going to discuss this three trades in East Africa, the Indian Ocean trade, long distance trade, and then slave trade. Basically giving you the key areas which are examined as far as these trades are concerned. So I'm going to start with the first trade, that is the Indian Ocean trade. I'm going to start with the Indian Ocean trade. It is also sometimes referred to as the coastal trade coastal trade or it is sometimes referred to as the trans trans indian trans indian ocean trade if it is not termed as indian ocean it is sometimes referred to as coastal trade or referred to as the trans indian ocean trade so the examiner may use one or one of these three. The examiner may use Indian Ocean trade, coastal trade, or trans-Indian Ocean trade, meaning the same. So I'm going to give you the key areas which are examined as far as these trades are concerned. We are going to look at the organization, the first aspect, the organization. How was the trade organized? We are going to look at the organization of this trade. Uh, second, we are going to look at the effects, the effects of Indian Ocean trade. Basically, these two areas are Indian Ocean trade. It took place around 1,000. It was around 1,000 up to 1,500 AD. It took place between 1,000 up to 1,500 AD, the Indian Ocean trade coastal trade, all trans-Indian Ocean trade. So I'm going to start with the organization of the Indian Ocean trade. How was the Indian Ocean trade organized? So organization. Organization. We're going to look at the organization. Organization of the trade. Basically, we are going to concentrate on, we are going to, under organization, we are going to look at the first aspect, that is the participants, 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 the groups of people who participated in the Indian Ocean trade. Then second aspect, we are going to look at the main, main exports, main exports or major exports. Then third, we are going to look at the main imports. Main imports. Main imports. Next, we are going to look at uh, the medium, medium of exchange, medium of exchange. 
another one we are going to look at medium medium of communication medium of communication medium of communication then we look at means medium of transport medium of transport of transport and then we shall look at the group of people who financed this trade so the indian ocean trade as i told you earlier that it is also termed as the coastal trade or the trans indian ocean trade and it took place in 1000 up to 1500 ad the organization have summarized the organization of the indian ocean trade you have to talk about the major participants or the main participants the groups of people who participated in this trade we are seeing that foreign 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 participants included uh, the arabs the greeks and the persians then also the coastal people participated in the indian ocean trade and this included the bantu and the kushites so those were the main participants who are all groups of people who participated in the indian ocean trade then major all main exports these were goods in the interior these were goods in the interior of east africa for example ivory you talk about slaves you talk about ostrich feathers among others then you also talk about main imports goods from the coast of east africa main imports for example mirrors guns clothes among others then you also talk about the medium of exchange at first the medium of exchange was butter was butter system exchange of goods for goods then later coalitions later coalitions were introduced later coalitions were introduced as a medium of exchange then a medium of communication swahili was used as a medium of communication during the process of indian ocean trade then you talk about the medium of transport that slaves were used to carry goods slaves were used to carry goods from the interior up to the coast of east africa so the medium of transport was head portrage so this is the organization of the indian ocean trade and you also talk about the group of people who financed this trade those were the, in, uh, the indian bananians they were the major financiaries of the indian ocean trade or the coastal trade or the trans indian ocean trade so that is the organization so allow me to take you through the effects or the results or the outcomes of the indian ocean trade in east africa but before i do that allow me to go into a commercial break then after we we come back and look at the effects or the results of this trade this is the first royal university a kubiri zo kugoberera makizi gaba sawo bwetu baba kuita mu mbere no burunji setende kine juki za bayizi nabaza dente wandika bagalo kujega tako mulusomo lutandika mu august osobola kugenda ku mutimba gano ku kibanja cha www.mru.ac.ug okumanya bichisomese byenja ulo awamu ne bisale songero osobola kujja ku kibicha fechikulu echirumba masaka oba kutabirya feka ke kamengo okumanya bisinga wo osobola nokuba ku masimu gano mmanga noti msambu tano mukaga tano munana bire Nya mukaga zero, nenoti musambu tano nya, munane muemu, satu mukaga munana, nenoti musambu sambu bili, munana musambu mukaga, satu musambu munana. Desa the first row university, nwe rutino lukubu wangu. Now let us look at the effects, effects, effects of Indian Ocean. Indian Ocean. Trade. Effects of Indian Ocean trade. These effects, we get, actually we get these effects of the Indian Ocean trade or the coastal trade or the trans uh, Indian Ocean trade from our from our organization from our organization of Indian Ocean trade. For example, we talked about our main imports. We talked about main imports, meaning that this one is an effect. For it, we will see, we will come here the effects and say one new goods new goods all commodities new goods were introduced new goods were introduced were introduced 
in East Africa. In East Africa, then you give the example, Iggy, you talk about clothes, for ex uh, comma guns, comma mirrors, mirrors, among others, etc. etc. Then uh, the second, the second effect still, or we, we can get this effect from from our organization still because we talked about the medium of exchange. So you talk about that Kaushaus was introduced as a medium of exchange during the Indian Ocean trade. Then you also talk about Swahili language and the effects that Swahili language was introduced as a medium of communication. Then you talk about the introduction of Islam, that Islam as a religion, Islam as a religion was introduced, was introduced, all the Indian Ocean trade led to the widespread of Islam in East Africa. Then you also talk about that the Indian Ocean trade opened East Africa to the outside world. Then uh, you, you can also talk about you, you can also talk about uh, factors like that the Indian Ocean trade, the, the, the people, the participants, the participants or the group of people who participated in the Indian Ocean trade accumulated a lot of wealth. They accumulated a lot of wealth as a result of the Indian Ocean trade. For example, the Bantu and the Kushites. Then uh, you can also talk about uh, news uh, that the Arabs, Arabic language was introduced as an official language at the East African coast. Then you can also talk about the introduction of new uh, system of administration based on Sharia law. It was introduced by the Arabs at the East African coast as a result of the Indian Ocean trade. So the factors or effects of the Indian Ocean trade in the conclusion, they are both positive and negative as discussed in the essay above. Now, allow me, allow me to go on, on, on the second trade. That was the Indian Ocean trade. Now I'm going to discuss the second trade. The second trade, it is the long distance, long distance. Long distance trade. It is also sometimes referred to as the caravan, the caravan trade, or it is also referred to as the pre-colonial, the pre-colonial, the pre-colonial trade. If it is not termed as long distance trade, it can be termed as caravan trade or pre-colonial trade. So. This is the long distance trade, and under long distance trade, we are going to look at uh, the reasons. We are going to look at reasons, reasons or factors for the growth and development. Reasons or factors, or factors, or factors for the growth, for the growth and development, and development and development of long distance long distance trade long distance trade so we are going to look at the reasons or factors for the growth and development of long distance trade or caravan trade or pre-colonial trade and after looking at the reasons for the growth of this trade we shall proceed and look at the organization the organization the organization, the organization, this one was the first factor which is examined. Now the second one, organization. Organization of long distance trade. Organization of long distance trade. The third area, we shall look at the effects, the effects or the impact or the results, 
of long distance, long distance trade, long distance trade, and then shall look at factors, factors, factors for the decline, factors for the decline factors for the decline of long distance trade factors for the decline of long distance trade so that we are going to look at those basic areas as far as long distance trade is concerned now i'm going to start with the reasons of factors for the growth and development of long distance trade uh, long distance the reason just why it was termed as long distance trade, it involves people moving long distances from the interior of East Africa up to the coast. It took place in the first half of the 19th century. It took place in the first half of the 19th century. Then the major participants, you talk about the Arabs, were the major participants of this trade, and even African tribes, African tribes like the Yawo, the Akamba, the Chaga, the Nyamwezi, and the Baganda, among others. Those were the major participants in the long distance trade. Now let us look at the reasons or factors for the growth and development of long distance trade. One of the major factors for the development of this trade was the presence of valuable items, presence of valuable items in the interior of East Africa. For example, you talk about gold, you talk about ivory, you talk about ostrich feathers, among others. It was the major factor for the development, for the growth and development of long distance trade. Valuable items in the interior of East Africa. Then you talk about the presence of middlemen in, East, uh, in the interior of East Africa. For example, the Yawo, the Akamba, the Chaga, among others. Then you also talk about, uh, uh, you, you also talk about the role, the, the, the good leadership the good leadership of Mirambo, Nyungu Yamawe, and Mutesa one also led to the growth and development of this trade. Then the profitability of this trade, the trade was profitable, therefore many people participated, or many groups of people participated in the Indian Ocean trade in order to accumulate a lot of wealth, thus its growth and development. Then you talk about the hospitality, the hospitality, of the East African, of some tribes in East Africa that they easily welcomed uh, traders from foreign countries, which also led to the growth and development of long distance trade. Now, after looking at the reasons, all factors for the growth and development of this trade, let us proceed and we look at the organization. 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 Organization of long distance trade. Organization of long distance trade. They can set a question and say, how was the long distance trade organized? How was long distance trade organized? Meaning that a candidate should give the organization of the long distance trade. I told you that I have a simple formula uh, of how a student can master the, long di the organization of the long distance trade. The first, you, first and foremost, a candidate has to talk about the participants. The participants. The participants. The groups of people who participated in the long distance trade. Then after talking about the participants, you talk about main imports. You talk about main imports. You talk about main First, you start with exports. You talk about main exports. Then third, you talk about main imports. You talk about main imports. Then you talk about the medium of medium of exchange. Medium of exchange. Then you also talk about medium. Medium of communication, 
medium of communication. You also talk about medium, medium of transport. Then you talk about the trade routes. You talk about, before the trade routes, you talk about main trading centers. Main trading centers. Main trading centers. You also talk about the trade routes. Trade routes. Trade routes. So, this is the organization how the long distance trade was organized. Uh, you come and inform the examiner that the long distance trade, uh, it, is, it, is, it is termed as the long distance trade, or sometimes known as the caravan trade, or sometimes it is known as the pre-colonial trade. And it took place in the first half of the 19th century. First half of the 19th century. Then after you, 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 you talk about the major participants, that the major participants included the Arabs who traded with the in, tribes, who traded with the tribes in the interior of East Africa. For example, the Yawo, the Akamba, the Chaga, the Nyamwezi, Baganda, among others. Then you proceed and talk about the main exports, goods within the interior of East Africa, main exports. For example, you talk about ivory, you talk about copper, you talk about gold, among others. Goods within the interior of East Africa. Then you talk about main imports. Main imports. For example, you talk about mirrors, you talk about guns, you talk about clothes, among others. Then you proceed and you talk about the medium of exchange. What was the medium of exchange used during the long distance trade? That was the butter system. But exchange of goods for goods. And later, Kawaishaus, later, Kawaishaus were introduced. The spelling is here of Kawaishaus. Kawaishaus were introduced. Kawaishaus were introduced as the medium of exchange. Then you talk about the medium of communication. The medium of co communication, the language which was used in the process of long distance trade. That was Kiswahili. Kiswahili was used as the medium of communication. Then you proceed and you talk about the medium of transport. By then, slaves were used to carry goods from the interior of East Africa up to the coast. And the system of transport was known as heady portrage. Goods were carried on heads by the slaves from the interior up to the coast of East Africa. And then you come and talk about the main trading centers. Main trading centers included Bagamoyo, Tabora, Ujiji, among others. And then you come and you conclude by talking about the trade routes. The trade routes which were used by the traders. For example, you talk about uh, the, the, northern, the northern route. You talk about the central route, which was the busiest and the biggest route. Then you talk about the southern route. So that is the organization of the long distance trade. Now allow me to proceed to the effects. 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 Let us look at the effects of this trade. Effects. Effects of long distance. Effects of long distance. Long distance trade. Effects of long distance trade. So they can set a question and say, what were, the what were the results of the long distance trade? Or what were the effects of the long distance trade? Or if they don't use effects, they can use impact. So they can use impact to mean effects. They can use results to mean effects. They can use outcomes. What were the outcomes of the long distance trade? So let us look at the effects of the long distance trade. The long distance trade, uh, led to the introduction of new goods in East Africa, you have to give the examples. For example, mirrors, guns, among others. The groups of people or the tribes which participated in this trade, for example, the Baganda, the Yawo, and the Nyamwezi accumulated a lot of wealth in the long distance trade. Then the long distance trade led to the raise 
of strong and dynamic leaders. For example, Mirambo, Nyongu ya Mawe, among others. Then the long distance trade also led to the growth and expansion of some states or some societies. For example, Mirambo Empire. Yeah. Then you also talk about that the long distance trade led to the introduction of Kiswahili as a medium of communication. Then you also talk about uh, you, you also talk about the introduction of uh, means of exchange that was Kawaishaus as the medium of exchange. Then Kiswa, uh, uh, Islam as a religion was widely spread into the interior of East Africa. Then it opened, the long distance trade also opened East Africa to the outside world. So those are some of the effects or results or impact of the, of the long distance trade in East Africa during the first half of the 19th century. Now, let us, before we proceed, allow me to go into a short break. Then after, when we come back, we'll look at the we we'll look at other, another area which is examined as far as the long distance trade is concerned. Those are the factors for the decline of the long distance trade. This is the first Royal University. A Kubi is Okubiri Ramakis Gabasawa, but Tuba Bakuita Mumbere no Runji. Certain the Kinejukizaba is Nabaza Denti, Wandi Kabagaro Kujega Tako, Murusomuru Tandikam August, or Soburu Kugena Kumutimbagano, which Banjata www.mru.ac.ug, Okumanya which some Sebi and Jauro, Awamu Navy Sale, Songero Soburu Kujakusha Fechkuru, Echiru Mamasaka, or Bakutabi Afeka Keka Mengo, Okumanya Singawa, or Sobora Nokuba Kumasimugano Manga, Notum Samutano Mukaga, Tano Munana Biri. Nyamukaga zero, nenotum sambutano nya, monane muemu, satum kaga munana, nenotum sambu sambu bidi, monana msambu kaga, satum sambu munana. This is the first Royal University, where routine no roku wangu. Back from that commercial break, let us proceed with the distance trade. By the time we went into a commercial break, we had completed the effects of the distance trade, and now we are going to proceed and we look at the factors. Factors for the decline. Factors for the decline. Factors for the decline of long distance trade or pre colonial or caravan trade. Factors for the decline of this trade. Factors for the decline. Factors for the decline of long distance long distance trade factors for the decline of long distance trade why did that long distance trade decline they can say the question and say explain the factors for the decline of long distance trade so the candidate is expected to give the factors which i'm going to discuss uh, one of the factors, remember, we say that factors, one of the factors for the growth and development of long distance trade was the presence of valuable items in the interior of East Africa. Again, factors for the decline of this trade was the scarcity, scarcity of trading items, that goods or items in the interior of East Africa became scarce. For example, uh, gold, slaves, ivory, among others, thus the decline of long distance trade. Then you, you also talk about the abolition, you also talk about uh, you, you can also talk about wild animals. Wild animals, for example, lions, also led to the decline of this trade. You also talk about uh, you also talk uh, you can also talk about western tribes, for example, uh, the Maasai in Kenya the Maasai in Kenya, who disrupted the long distance trade. We also talk about the Ngoni invasion in East Africa, the Ngoni invasion in East Africa. They came in and disrupted the long distance trade, simply because the Ngoni used to fight some tribes in East Africa using Shaka's fighting techniques of short-stabbing spears. So also this resulted into the decline of long distance trade. Yeah, those are some of the factors for the decline of this trade and we are going to proceed and we look at another trade 
known as slave trade. Slave trade. Slave trade in East Africa. This is the last trade. But before we go any further, a candidate should be well conversant with the definition of slave trade. What is slave trade? Slave trade is a commercial transaction of buying and selling of human beings. That is slave trade. And under slave trade, so we are going to look at the reasons. Reasons or factors. Factors for the growth. For the growth and development. For the growth and development. Of slave trade, of slave trade. We are going to look at reasons or factors for the growth and development of slave trade, the commercial transaction which dealt in buying and selling of human beings. Here, a candidate can talk about can talk of factors like the profitability of the of slave trade, which were on a high demand in different European countries. Therefore, this resulted in the growth and development of the Western state. Then the candidate can also talk about the settlement of Sayyid Sayyid into Zanzibar, also led to the growth and development of this trade. So because Sayyid Sayyid wanted slaves to work on these cloth plantations in Zanzibar. Then the candidate can also talk about uh, the introduction of guns. The introduction of guns by the Arabs in East Africa also led to the growth and development of slave trade simply because guns were used in the process of capturing slaves. Therefore, also this led to the growth and development of this trade. Then, after looking at the reasons or factors for the development of this trade, we also proceed and we look at the organization. 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 Organization, organization of slave trade, organization of slave trade. How was the slave? How was slave trade organized? So, here a candidate has to talk about the process of acquisition. The process of acquisition. Process of acquisition of slaves. How slaves were acquired, slaves of uh, process of acquisition of slaves. Sometimes slaves were acquired by raids, by organizing raids, and sometimes slaves were bought directly from their leaders or from traditional chiefs and kings. Then uh, you, you also sometimes slaves were acquired through anipiki, through anipiki. Then we proceed to the second. Uh, the second point as far as the organization of slave trade is concerned, uh, we talk about mm, transportation, transportation. After acquiring slaves, how slaves were transported from the interior of East Africa, from the interior of East Africa up to the coast. Slaves were tied on ropes and chains, and then goods like copper, ivory, were loaded on their heads, moved from the interior up to the coast of East Africa. But the slave died on the way into, before reaching at the coast of East Africa. Then, third, we also talk about uh, the, the, the tribes. Tribes involved. Tribes involved. Tribes involved in slave trade. This included Baganga, Namwezi, among others, the tribes involved in long distance in, in, the, in slave trade. Tribes involved in slave trade, Namwezi, Baganda, among others. Then we proceed and we, 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 we also talk about slave trade markets. Slave trade, slave trade markets. Slave trade markets. Then after slave trade markets, we talk about slave trade routes. Those included, they were basically three slave trade routes. 
we had the northern road, the central road, and the southern road. So that is the organization of slave trade, how slave trade was organized. So basically, those are the three trades which are examined in East Africa. As I've discussed them, I've discussed the Indian Ocean trade, which took place in 1000 up to 1500 AD. It is also sometimes sometimes refer, referred to as the coastal trade or the trans-Indian Ocean trade. We have to look at the factors for the development of the Indian Ocean trade, then the organization of Indian Ocean trade, then we bring out the effects or the results or the impact of the Indian Ocean trade. Then I've also discussed the long distance trade. The long distance, it is also sometimes referred to as the caravan trade or the pre-colonial trade and it took place in the first half of the 19th century. It involved people moving long distances from the interior up to the coast of East Africa and we have talked about different tribes who participated, for example, the Yao, the Chaga, the Yamoisi, the Akamba, the Baganda, among others, who traded with the Arabs. Then we have looked at the reasons or factors for the growth and development of long distance trade and then the organization, how was long distance trade organized and then we have proceeded and looked at the, the factors for the beginning of long distance trade and lastly we have looked at slave trade factors for its growth and development, how was the trade organized, yeah basically those are the trades which are examined in history of East Africa. With that, allow me to submit. Don't forget to subscribe MRU TV. I remain teacher of Kenya Joseph, a teacher at Udo College and Vienna High School. You can contact me on 075-70-53-81. Thank you so much. A glance at the aim of regionalism empowerment. When you take a sport or either take a deep look at the way the AMR Regionalism Department is devoted to the practice. It is hands-on to every participant and backed by the Wellstock Studios of Rio FM and AMR TV. The department has fed the group of practice with outstanding personnel backed by professionals in the practice and it is seen from the products of the different students take a glance at every sector the rare fm has all the required machines and personnel to release a well-backed student the mro tv now has some of the most competitive programs in the media world it is Motesa One Re University Journalism Department.